All right, I didn't do quite as well in the Champions League, so a tougher opponent in the play- PSG again? It was looking like our best season yet. Undefeated in the Greek League, defeating Inter, Ajax, and drawing Manchester United in Europe. Plus several players came in who could really turn this team into something special. With our biggest transfer budget so far, the Wonder Kid farming continued. Those good enough for the first team included Marbar Lazo, a Chilean playmaker from Universidad Catolica. Then, from Serbia, our iron wall of Nikola Milovac bought from Red Star. Although, the most expensive of all was left back Joao Lopes. These guys were awesome, but only Milovac was expected to be a starter. That changed as Bernardo's 2.5 million release clause was finally activated. We also have to say goodbye to Miguel Aziz, who went to Leipzig for 9 million, and Peter Atebo. The Nigerian was the last of that original squad. Other than Andre Gray, who retired as a favorite personnel, but had the absolute cheek to ask for 3.5k a week as a crap coach. Regardless, thanks for the work you both did. While Lazo was a promising player, Miguel Aziz's true replacement was Desire Due. Kind of a similar story to Goulart. He was never given enough starts to truly develop into the player I expected when I saw him on the Next Generation 2022 list. However, for the same price as Aziz, could he fill that potential here? Finally, the loan of Carboni. A player I always wanted to use on FM, I got my chance with an option to buy at the end of the season. The Argentine was as good as I expected, scoring and assisting both in the league and in Europe. The fans immediately became infatuated with him when he nabbed a brace on his debut versus Lech Poznan. Truly a revolutionary player, I may have fallen in love, but they always warn you, don't fall in love with a loan. I couldn't listen to them though, especially with his equalizer against Manchester United in the 94th minute. Despite the fixtures going smoothly, there were some issues. First of all, our prodigy center back Nyambe got offers to leave, but I obviously refused. Unfortunately, he really wanted to go to these clubs, leading to his anger, and his teammates came forward. Morgala thankfully understood my perspective. Unlike Kovacevic, Manolas, and Kamate? Why are you even in the room? Okay, if you feel that way, you go out alone to our affiliate. No. All right, get the hell out! Another issue was the multiple injuries to Arda Guler in the first phase of the campaign. That gave an opportunity for Shopop to step up, which he did relatively well. And due to Carboni's flexibility, he filled in a camp too, but he was more needed at striker. Before our loss to Bayern in January, the team went on an 11-match undefeated run with goals conceded in only two of them. Everyone seemed on point, but the end of January was rough with the Champions League matches mentioned. Plus, release clauses continued to be the vein towards my existence. Since we're still a lower reputable league, some players require these to sign for us. This gets annoying. But in order to get better, we need to include them. One of them was for Ethan Laird, who had been fantastic, but everyone in the championship had 8.25 million to activate that clause. Thankfully, he has some self-worth, until Tottenham arrived. Him not being good in big matches makes it so that this isn't a complete devastation. Added to that, we had a new project on our hands. Last season, I signed Greek midfielder named Sotiris Alexandropoulos from Sporting for a cheap fee. The man was fast, and I thought, right back. Why do you do this? Why do you act like this? Jason could play there too, along with Ratsos. To be safe, Vysotic was loaned to add depth. Also, Michel got sacked. Then there was the Greek Cup troubles. Due to it being placed between Bayern and Manchester United, we used a rotated side versus Pauk in the first leg. That led to a 0-0 draw, going to the away tie in February. The previous campaign saw me try a U23 challenge, but this year, I actually wanted to win it. A strong line about, and we can see 15 minutes in. From there, terrible football was being played, Carboni missing point blank chances, and Pauk advancing because we couldn't score a single goal against our rivals. I said you must be wondering, we lost one match and he throws bottle already? The form leading to PSG in the playoff round wasn't ideal, so I had a team meeting before our fixture versus Ofi. I know the recent form hasn't gone our way, but we've got the ability to change our fortunes. Great! Keep criticizing us! That's going to end really well for you! Oh, what have I done? This usually works, but the faces of everyone were filled with rage, and we had PSG in a week! Time to praise everyone for every little thing. Good job training, Carboni. Thanks for being on time, Arda. Appreciate you picking up the trash there, Due. Thanks for today feeling like you, Gino. Well, that seemed to have helped. 
PSG were up, but unfortunately, we had Kovacevic barely returning from injury and Rakov recovering. I also pulled a bold move to drop our captain Gino in order to have more technical ability in our midfield. The Parisians no longer had Messi, but he was replaced by a man 58 times faster than him. Still, this was our redemption game against the Champions League winners, but in reality, whatever happens, happens. I just wish we could mark Mbappe off a cross, and even worse, Due got injured, which would rule him out for the second leg. Despite those setbacks, we responded well. Guler's pass was intercepted, yet Carboni was strong enough to win it back and equalize. A second half full of hope. Yes, sir! <laughs> the lack of marking blew my mind. Nevertheless, we weren't going to lay down. Milovat saw Guler in the box, who did a quick turn and shot, equalizing the aggregate again. While I'm annoyed how we conceded some of the goals, I'll take a two-all draw. Now came the dreaded away tie. Last season, we completely capitulated this game. I hoped we could do better, but I knew that my expectations had to be low. Since the tactic I used in leg one was the same approach that saw three goals conceded in 20 minutes last season, I switched towards an even more defensive approach, seeing one more defender added to our back line. It had to go better this time. The redemption game where we win. That's what most great stories would write. Oh, a highlight off the kickoff? I play on key highlights, so this is a, it's 1-0 PSG. Guys, we have, I've added an extra center back. How did the goalkeeper not get that? Oh, I had no expectation, but bro. The game plan gets thrown out the window. I, I expected us to have a hard time, but not 10 minutes in. 10 minutes, it's 2-0? That happened, I know that happened last time. Where's the marking, man? I might as well not even do a, a season five video if this is just gonna end the same way. I seriously considered that. Surely that's offside. Who kept him on side there? Frog watch for you, my sons. So what they did in 41 minutes last season, this year, they did it in 20. Carboni would score from the spot, giving us a chance. Who am I kidding? They got a fifth before halftime. A consolation goal arrived from Cholak, but we were eliminated by a score of 7-4. to four. I realize we're not as good as PSG. It's just frustrating experiencing this for a second year in a row, especially in the bloody playoff round. Once more, they went on and won the Champions League. So here's my vow. If we play this damn club again in the knockouts and lose, just like baseball, three strikes and you're out. Retirement on the spot. I couldn't give a toss for the rest of the campaign, so Lazaros took over, meaning our undefeated season was no more, but the club got the most points in their history with 94. That was despite me instructing Lazaros to play a specific lineup, which didn't include Carboni. Why is that? Well, despite Inter giving me an option to buy him, they decided to negotiate a new contract with him behind my back, which meant Inter gave him a 74k a week contract, resulting in him having no interest in joining me permanently. At the very least, Guler wanted to sign a new deal, so we gave him a new contract at the end of the campaign. It still has a release clause, but he seemed happy at the start of preseason. 